Eventually, even a 16 gram FizzGiz cartridge becomes empty, and you can either replace it or you can make it refillable. Chucking the cartridge into a 3 jug chuck, not too tightly. As it turns, you will see that it's somewhat eccentric, but that won't make any difference in the long run. We'll need a way to grab hold of the cartridge seal, which is a small insert of the neck of the cartridge, and the easiest way is to drive in a small screw, drive it in approximately one half of an inch. This will be able to grip it so we can extract it. To break the seal, use a very sharp high-speed steel tool and remove perhaps five to ten thousandths of an inch at a time. If you try to take off too much or don't have a sharp tool, this metal is very gummy and it will, it will usually seize. You can tell when you're done because the screw will suddenly start to wobble. Right there. Once it's broken free, you can pull it out and you can see the piece of the seal that's left. If you look inside the cartridge, you'll see a shelf which was part of the sealing process. If you try to drill it out in a single pass, you will seize the drill and have a very difficult time. It's much easier to take it in four stages, starting with a 530 second drill, making a complete pass, and then increasing the drill by one thirty second size until you reach the final size of a quarter. You notice that the drill is moving slightly eccentrically but it self centers in, in the neck which is what needs to be done and won't affect the final product. The final quarter inch size should peel off a nice thin ribbon of steel Again, if you move slowly and uh, don't rush the process. To end with a final polished size, use a quarter inch st uh, straight ream. And if you apply a small amount of side pressure, you will have a minimally oversized hole and the valve will slip in smoothly. The end needs to be finished. Use a deburring tool a couple of times to remove a minimal amount. Then using a flat, fine diamond file, polished and the edges are deburred. Here are two valves, one assembled and one showing the four valve components. The components are the valve body made from 1 quarter inch 303 stainless steel, a valve pin cut from a 1 eighth inch 303 stainless steel, a small spring which is a stock element, and the valve seat itself is made from a polyethylene PTFE ball. Here's another view showing the polished valve seat. To assemble the valve, the spring is placed over the pin that's placed into the valve body and the valve body is placed on top of the sealing ball. The spike in the bottom of the pin is driven into the ball with a few blows from a small hammer. The pin should sit approximately flush with the edge of the valve body when it's in place. Next we need to see if the pin is seated properly. A 632nd screw is inserted into the front of the valve forcing the pin forward. You can then look at the distance between the ball and the pin and if it's any distance a couple of taps will close the gap. Completely seated the valve is then ready for testing or mounting in the cartridge. Remove the 632nd screw. Then you need a small washer that's lightly covered with silicone grease. This will be bolted to the front of the valve using the same 632nd screw. 
This makes a seal which both prevents glue from entering the valve itself and it allows for easy seating of the valve flush with the face of the chamber. Before permanently cementing the valve in place, make sure it seats into the chamber neck very smoothly. You can see how nicely the washer makes it align with the, with the cartridge neck. Prior to, to gluing, take a acetone filled rag, wipe the outside of the valve stem to make sure that there's no oils or other material. The cement is Loctite 680, which is extraordinarily strong, is used to glue gun barrel liners into guns. Begin by taking a small amount on a wire, rub it around the inside of the cartridge neck to provide a thin film. You probably need to do it twice. Then a band of the Loctite is placed around the body of the valve. Keeping carefully aligned, insert the valve into the cartridge neck and then slowly rotate and press which distributes the cement thoroughly between the joint. Keeping it upside down, wipe the excess from the rim. The cement can be started by heating it gently with a butane torch until it's just slightly uncomfortable to the touch. Another 8 to 10 hours and it's completely set. When the glue is completely set, the screw can be removed. And a gentle pressure can pop off the washer. We now have a completed refillable sealed, cartridge. This air, it should first be purged. Place it in the loader, tighten up the restraining screw just slightly, and make sure the bleeder valve is closed. With the tank upright, open it for a second or two, close it, bleed off excess pressure, and then the cartridge bleed off pressure till it's almost empty, leaving just a little bit of pressure. Sure, the fill is proper, we should weigh the empty cartridge. In this case, we show it weighing 42 grams. Place it in the freezer if you can find room, and leave it for roughly half an hour until it gets nice and cold. Then remove it from the freezer. Uh, you might want to use something to protect it in your hands. And this time, we place it in the loader just as we did before gently holding it in place and making sure the bleed valve is closed but this time it's turned upside down to let the liquid CO2 flow into the cartridge. As it flows in you can see the frost disappear immediately from the cartridge. The bleeder valves opened and now we have a full cartridge. After we fill it, we need to weigh it again. At 56 grams, we find it contains 14 grams of CO2. The load can be increased slightly by chilling the cartridge and warming the tank. Now, let's put it in the Fizgiz. The Fizgiz. Loading the cartridge is exactly like loading a regular CO2 cartridge. Simply drop it in. Make sure the neck lines up and then screw it down tight. You're all ready to go. There's gas. But compared to what a, a regular cartridge will do, this one can be removed. See, no hole, just a valve. Put it back in again. And you've got gas.